matchup and make it into this top eight as well. Yeah, so actually we're just having a look through. We've got some of these guys' accomplishments before just so you guys have an idea of what their background is. Indeed, this is pretty much Victor's best result yet. He, we looked through, we couldn't really find anything that you know, he'd that's done before on the same level as this. So he's already, even if he, you know, not that we know that he's going to win or lose, but even if he loses his matchup, he's going to be very, very happy with his, his finish this weekend. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, still finishing in the money here, even if he does, does miss the top eight. Yeah, and also I made a I made a terrible mistake. I've definitely undersold Ni Nicholas Galas. He <laughs> is one of the top eight finishers from the worlds this year. Oh man! Yeah, <laughs> this is going to be insane to watch. It's, it's, I, I I I feel really terrible now. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Like, <laughs> Normally my uh, player knowledge is a lot more on point than that, but uh, yeah, apologies to Nicholas Galas. This uh, yeah, wow, this is going to be absolutely incredible to watch. Yeah, we'll see if he can pull out a victory here and get into the top eight here in Sao Paulo. This is the ultimate round we've been waiting for. And we'll see after this round, we'll have our top eight pretty much set. Yes, we will. Now, the both players have got their headsets on and we are starting to get the decklets through so we can give you some idea of what these guys are playing. Ooh, it yeah. is looking like Granbull from Victor here. Yeah, Victor Paredes, we're playing that Granbull deck. We've seen it so many times already. We know the deal, we know what's up. Uh, and it's just going to be the same deal again. Can Victor figure out that puzzle of the best way to sequence his turns to get that w consistent 160 damage every turn with the Grand Ball? And then meanwhile, looking at Nicholas's deck, it is... Oh, oh my, goodness. my goodness. We have a mirror match here for you folks. Grand Ball mirror, and the Victor will make <laughs> top eight. So... There is a guaranteed at least one grand ball in the top eight at this point is basically what we're saying. Oh man, this <laughs> is going to be exciting to watch because both of these decks really just play a game of solitaire. Yeah. Uh, it, you don't really interact with your opponent other than Guzma. So we could see a few plays where you Guzma up their Macargos, try to stymie their setup a little bit. But it's really just going to be, I'm going to play my cards, hope to get it, I'm gonna, and you're gonna play your cards, hope you get it, yeah. and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I think the interesting thing here to talk about is gonna be kind of the differences in the two lists. So we do actually see here that, um, that from Nicholas specifically, he's actually playing a Zeb Striker line in his list. He's playing a 1-1 Zeb Striker. This is, of course, the Zeb Striker with Sprint that uh, lets you, allows you to discard your hand and then draw four cards. We're really, really cool new support draw Pokemon from uh, Lost Ronda. Yeah, one that I thought we would see a lot more of this weekend, but it's still been very good in the decks we have seen yeah. it. Yeah, we have seen it a fair amount day one, to be fair. It's one of those things where I think some people, it's like Joe was saying yesterday, you always have to respect a Pokemon which has like a draw ability just because they'll almost always inherently be good by you know, the virtue of drawing cards is good. But um, yeah, definitely perhaps not seen it as much as we would have thought in day two at least. All right, and the biggest thing that these decks play for the mirror match is that tool card, Bodybuilding Dunbells. Looking at Nicholas's deck, he does not play a copy. And looking at Victor's, he plays two copies of Dunbells. So that's gonna be absolutely huge. That's definitely gonna make a big difference in how this matchup plays out. Yeah. And uh, if both players get set up, then uh, Victor will have the advantage with those two Dunbells in his deck. Yeah, definitely. And this is, uh, I mean, who would have thought, right, preparing for the Grand Ball Mirror would be something that you need to do, but uh, that does end up being the way it's played out. And, okay, looks like two trying to punishment prize there, but that, that's those, fine. Those are perfect prizes <laughs> yeah. because both of you are playing three. Whoever gets the first one in play, it's really going to stick for a while, and that's going to be stuck in your hand. Yeah, and that's going to create problems because it means that the Grand Balls won't be able to get to the you know, 160 damage as easily. Wow. All right. And here we are, the final round of Swiss here for the International Championships in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have a Grand Bowl mirror match for you. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm looking forward to this a lot, to be honest. Uh, I, I'm loving this right now. No, so both players have to set off. It looks like that's going to be uh, Nicolas going first, or is it? Oh, no, the camera needs to still flip around. So it's going to be. It's going to be Victor going first, and he has opened with the Apricorn Maker. Yeah, going first is huge in this matchup. Being able to evolve your Macargos and your Granbulls before your opponent and take the first prize is really what you want. And if Victor can actually pull off a few Dunbells early, too, uh, we could see a pretty clean sweep. 
Yeah, indeed. So what's he going to go for off of this apricorn maker? It looks to be a nest ball and an ultra ball. Of course, he wanted to get the nest ball just to get yeah, start getting his ideal setup out with all the basics he wants, but also ultra ball being important just to thin out the hand and start get rolling with these all outs for 160 damage. And there is the nest ball. Uh, this scramble deck, like I said, is pretty straightforward. You're going to do the same thing every game. And it's not really going to change. No. You, you, your whole game plan is, I'm going to get zero cards in my hand and do 160. Yeah, that, that's the, that doesn't change just because you're in a, in a mirror match. In fact, if anything, in a sense, it becomes more important. Because if you miss a beat of attacking against the GX deck, for example, you still yeah, you might get KO'd, but you, you KO back and you're even. If you miss a beat of attacking here, that means you're one prize behind in winning tempo, essentially. And that's a lot more impactful. Yeah, there's no real comeback potential in this mirror match. Uh, it reminds me a lot of <laughs> all the way back to 2011, uh, one of my favorite decks was Reshiram Typhlosion. But that was the deck you got top eight with, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, it was a deck where your mirror match was, as long as you continue your string of knockouts, it's whoever took the first knockout is going to win. Yeah, because it's just, you know, attached with Typhlosion Prime, uh, K Reshiram with Reshiram, and just a trade, uh, trade back and forth until someone misses or until the game ends. All right, and there we see a pass from Victor having his pretty ideal setup now. And we see a nest ball from Nicholas here. Yeah, just again, looking through, just make sure that he knows what's available to him. Just uh, looking for all the options in his deck. There is the other yeah, one, one Zeb striker line that we that we saw there. Just really, really cool choice from uh, from Nick and Nicholas, uh, just to be able to uh, get that more consistent draw engine going. Yeah, uh, Zeb striker might be one of the difference maker here too. Is if both players have cards stuck in their hand that they can't really use. Uh, it could be something that you're like, okay, I'll discard a bunch of these supporters that I can't play. Yeah, it's one of, it's one of these ways to get, especially the Shrine of Punishments as well, like we already mentioned, whoever gets the first one down is going to create essentially three dead cards in the other person's deck, so you need to be able to just get rid of those as quickly as possible. And having pretty much the perfect start here without an Apricorn Maker, getting down a ton of Pokemon, but again, that's what this deck does. Yeah, absolutely. It just, you know, playing all the ball search cards, all the Nest Balls and Ultra Balls just to really thin the hand down to a minimal size. And look at this from Nic Nicholas. It's actually a much better setup than uh, Victor. Victor's setup is OK. But look what we have from Nicholas's side. Two Slugmas, an Oranguru, a Ditto ready to come something else, and another Oranguru and a Snubble. We have three pair, folks. Yes. Three pair. <laughs> yeah. Three pair. That is absolutely incredible. And there goes the first instruct from Nicholas. Uh, Going to drop to three cards. And Having the Macargo in his wow. hand and Diantha as well. That could be. Kind of a tricky card to play around this early on, uh, especially since with the Slugma active, it's not really going to be turned on next turn if Victor takes a prize. No, indeed it's not. And uh, unfortunately for Nicholas, that Great Ball not finding the Grand Ball, that's really what he, or maybe even a Macargo, but no evolutions basically. There's not really anything there he wants to actually grab. So instead, after playing the Great Ball, he's going to go for another Instruct. And I'm not sure what he found there. It's like probably just kept it in his hand and passed. All right, so now back to Victor. Oh, oh. It looks like a Fiery Flint, which is not bad no, that's for getting rid of that Diantha. Yeah, that's still pretty good. That means that as long as he's able to find the things he needs off of Macargo, he will be able to instruct into and to set himself up for an all-out for 160. But all right, so this is a little awkward hand from Victor here. Uh, having the Ultra Ball, discarding the Switch and the Rescue Stretcher, but he still needs a few cards. Getting the Macargo most likely, but he will be able to get his hand down as well. Yeah, there, there is a very much a potential for an attack with the Grand Ball for a knockout this turn, given that he has got the Ditto and the active with an energy, that could become a Grand Ball. And so it's just a matter of him playing out the rest of his hand to make sure that he gets all the pieces he needs and that he can set up a follow-up attacker efficiently. There goes the smooth over. Yeah, the biggest thing, too, is being able to do all of this with getting Snubbles in play. Yes, exactly. He does have one Snubble in play already, to be fair. So I think if he does just go for the Gramble this turn, plays out the rest of his hand, and takes the KO, that still actually puts him in a fine position. Well, he went with a very good card, Abercorn Maker, putting it on top and then instructing, being able to search his deck for Nest Ball and possibly the Ultra Ball to get Granbull here, because the two cards in your hand, you do not need for this matchup, Choice Band and Shrine of Punishment. Yeah, absolutely. So those are literally pretty much the perfect Ultra Ball fodder. So yeah, there it is. Nest Ball is going to grab himself um, uh, another 
I have another Slugma or another Oranguru. Probably not another Snubble, given that he already has one on the bench. And your ideal setup is really two of each one. So, yeah, there it is. Another Oranguru. So he has uh, two Instructs per turn now. That's going to be pretty much I the ideal for him. Ultra Ball discards the Shrine of Punishment and the Choice Band. And so he's going to grab Grand Ball and take the first knockout of the game. So advantage Victor yeah, immediately. Th this could be a little awkward, though, because with only the one with Cargo in play, uh, it might be threatened by maybe a Guzma if Nikolos actually has access to it, but he is also down a Slugma as well. Yeah, so it's it, no matter which way you look at it, it's got a Nikolas has got to be, or Victor has got to be pretty happy with how that turn panned out. Ooh, like another supporter off the top. It's the Tate and Liza, and actually we're going to see the often not used effect <laughs> in this Granbull deck. Shuffle your hand in and draw five cards. He still needs quite a few cards to put together. Didn't have the energy turn one like Victor did. And drawing five cards, he is pretty much... Uh, it, it, it'll take a lot of bad luck for him to not to get down at least to an instruct. Yeah, yeah. especially considering he has the one, the one Makago out. And looks like he drew one fair edge off that and the ground ball. That's actually really perfect. That's, that's actually a really good hand. As long as he's able to find something he can use to discard that Deanfa he drew. Yeah, well, he still has access to Smooth Over, so he could get a card like Fiery Flint or Ultra Ball. And he's uh, yeah, going to evolve the Gramble in the active. Imagine, yeah, the Fairy Engine's going to go on too. Now, does he go for the Great Ball immediately? Yes, he does. Probably ideally looking for another Gramble would be great, or perhaps even a, uh, another Slugma. Or, or he could just Ooh, find nothing. Or nothing. <laughs> yeah, Yikes. unfortunately, he would have loved to see... Macargo, Granbull, or Snubble, either of them would have been amazing here. And then shortcutting right away, smooth over, instruct, get that Ultra Ball, get the Snubble down. Yeah. Uh, really kind of prioritizing that Ditto Prism Star just in case this Macargo goes down. Yeah, because uh, that way, you know, next turn, if the Macargo does go down, that, uh, yeah, the second Macargo will be available to him. But uh, yeah, just discarding this entire hand is gone now. So that will be the all out for 160. And Nicholas is keeping up tempo right now, which is still good. But the way he needs to progress if he wants to actually win this game and is to he try and... Victor actually just drew his own copy of Tate and Liza. Could opt oh. to go the same route here. Quite possibly, yeah. Uh, does have Ultra Ball in his hand, a pretty good card. But he still needs a few cards as well. And if he could kind of find one of his bodybuilding dumbbells, that would be game-breaking. Yeah, it's one of those tricky things where he actually... Oh. Oh, Whoa. Diantha off the instruct for one, not even wanting to smooth over. He was really just hoping to discard that card with Ultra Ball. Yeah, exactly. But as it said, it ended up being a card that's really good. So, But now with the Diantha, I'm fairly sure that guarantees that he's able to get the return knockout. Yeah, uh, Diantha gets the Granbull and the energy, uh, or possibly, yeah, Granbull and energy. He can instruct and then Ultra Ball for a snubble. Yeah, and that would uh, be really great for him. There is the Diantha. Oh, he still has access two smooth over as well. So, and having a news one instruct, yeah, he can basically just guarantee that the second card he gets off of the instruct is useful. Something he wants to discard. Exactly. There it is. Grand ball, energy. Imagine, uh, and he's going to go for it. Just another instruct? Oh, it's another. Oh, no, it's a Guzma. Okay. okay. I thought it was another Diantha, and no. I was oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's not ideal, but it's not the end of the world. I, I guess, it, so that means what he's instead doing, he's going to smooth over now and just make sure that his top deck for the next turn is perfect, which is completely fair as well. Yeah, probably maybe a card like Apricorn Maker. Uh, such a powerful card in a deck like this. Uh, really got a lot of hype after rotation, uh, after we lost cards like Bridget and things like that, but then kind of didn't really fit into most decks. Lily was just better option. But when you don't want to draw cards, it's perfect for. Yeah, interestingly enough, he does opt to go for the Rescue Stretcher off of this move over, puts that to the top of the deck, takes his second prize of the game. Now, again, they're going back on Nicolas. Does he, or rather, is he able to find the, other, the pieces that he needs again to take a return knockout? He's got a second Macago out now, which is very good for him. Yeah, and this is why he left that Ditto Prism untouched, uh, just having two Macargo out is insane for this deck, and really having access to his entire deck this game. Definitely. And it looks like he's actually just going to opt for the down for off of the smooth over. Of course, if he instructs into that, it will pretty much again guarantee that he has the return knockout. So no one quite missing a beat just yet. But again, like we mentioned, the problem being, if this uh, carries on at the current pace it is, Victor's going to win because he took the first prize. Yeah, especially if he has access to his dumbbells as well. 
Uh, this is actually the first game, at least I've seen, with these Gramble decks that actually showcases the power of Diantha as a supporter card. Yeah, definitely, because because both players are pretty much guaranteed to knock out a fairy Pokemon because of the way that that's the matchup sort of plays out. It's just, yeah, going to make Diantha live more often than not, which is why we're seeing now it being used so much. All right, same exact play from Nikolas here. Smooth over. Oh, this is slightly different, actually, because uh, Victor opted to smooth over at the, at just the end of his turn, whereas actually Nicholas is opting to go for it now. Or maybe got something in mind that he wants to see to maybe fill up that last bench slot in the ideal manner. Well, he has that Ultra Ball in hand. I could even see him just getting a Choice Band or a Shrine of Punishment it's to not put in his hand. So he, did, he didn't oh, have... Oh, he had the Fiery Flint, that's yeah, right. That's it, but he got the Ultra Ball to smooth over, so yeah, they can discard his hand and probably just imagine grab himself another Snubble. And uh, yeah, again, another ideal turn for Nicholas as he's able to get the backup attacker potentially ready and then just take the KO on Victor's Gramble. And it is, th this is really the only deck that will play this way. And it shows how versatile Pokemon is as a card game. There's so many options you can go. There are mill decks that have been in day two where you really just don't attack at all and yeah. hope to mill your opponent out. Then there's the Zoroark control deck where it has that option, but it also can just lock your opponent out of the game, and it can just take prizes as well. Yeah. And then you have a deck like Grand Bull, where I'm going to play basically the entire game with no cards in hand at the end of my turn and still just dominate your board. Yeah, and this is a sort of pretty much the, the almost a takeaway from Lost Thunder is that it's kind of impacted the game in a way where the amount of decks which are viable has you know, increased by a lot because you just have these new archetypes which are coming in and uh, uh, nine tails making all these stage two archetypes viable again all of a sudden and it's really really cool to see there is the smooth over from victor here probably looking for diantha sure enough there it is he plays it all right so he does have the energy or cycle system in his hand that he got from the prizes so he probably won't search for that with this diantha could just see the 1-1 one, one Granbull line here. Yeah, just uh, evolve the active and get the other Snubble down ready to go for next turn should he need it. Actually, oh, maybe think about going for a Nest Ball, interestingly enough. Just yeah, well, kind of thin out your deck of those Snubble uh, or Granbull. So he goes for Snubble and Nest Ball. Oh, he has the Rescue Stretcher in hand. Oh, yes, of course he does. So, uh, so this could probably get him the second Slugma. Or another Snubble? Yeah. There we go. But, but, but just wanting to get out as many snubbles as possible just to make sure that he always has a follow-up attacker to work with. Yeah, definitely thinking ahead here. Uh, he is up in the advantage a little bit, being able to go down to three prizes this turn after he attacks. Oh, of course, the other Slugma's prize. That's why oh, he's not going yes. for it. So he explains everything. Yeah, and that also means that Having to evolve that Ditto Prism Star uh, is pretty game-breaking uh, earlier on in that game. It really, really is. Yeah. So uh, he won't be able to find the second Makago unless he somehow manages to, you know, push out the prizes before it, you know, the game finishes. Yeah, and Joe was saying earlier with Tord's game how you really don't do anything for your turn until you figure out everything you're going to do. Yeah, and it's just some it's a sudden explosion of cards being played. So there is the first smooth over for Nicholas here. He's got to be very careful with what he picks here. He still, although he's been you know taking his KOs you know, quite convincingly, he's been doing his setups well, he still hasn't quite been able to find the, the turn where he can use it to swing the KO tempo in his favor. Right now, he's still one prize behind Victor constantly, and he cannot let this carry on if he wants to, to win this match. So he still has access to one smooth over, most likely going to get him an energy. And it feels kind of safe for him, since he has that mysterious treasure in hand, that he can just discard whatever else he draws with it. Yeah, he, he knows that no matter what he gets, he will be able to clear out his hand for another all-out, and I'm sure whatever he... Uh, what he's getting at this point will be just uh, the, the fairy energy to guarantee the attack. Yeah, and it's just insane to think about how consistent this deck is once it gets set up and how easy it is to get down to zero cards in your hand. Yeah. Oh, and he, and he actually just oh, draws. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. yeah, draw the Zeep Striker that you can't even use. 
Discard it with Mysterious Treasure. Check to see what you have. All right. I know my game plan. Yeah, no, 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 that is, again, pretty ideal for Nicolas. So, again, on goes the Fairy Energy, and it's another all out. Again, no one missing a beat yet in this uh, mirror match. All right. All out for the knockout. And doing the double snubble play last turn kind of helps Victor here because now he doesn't have to Diantha for another basic or uh, try to just search out. He has that. Uh, backup already. So maybe this is the turn where he probably finds that bodybuilding dumbbells. Yeah, and that would be if he's able to you know, whack that on and then prevent a front of KO from Nicholas, and that puts him even further ahead in tempo as if he, he's already ahead and that would, if that stops Nicholas from getting a KO, then that would be absolutely phenomenal. Alright, so evolve into that Gramble and then smooth over, debating what he really wants to do. He has that Oh, he's looking at his discard. Okay. Uh, Instructs sure blind, hits the energy, and a rescue stretcher as well. Wow, that's, that's a pretty pretty incredible no matter which way you look at it. He'd be able to use the rescue stretcher. Oh, and an apricorn maker. Yeah, he had that in his hand uh, from the prizes. Yeah, yeah, that was it, yeah. Great card to see. Yeah, so uh, essentially uh, it was all like guaranteed that he's going to have zero cards in his hand at the end of the turn. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, no way he was missing that. It's just a matter of, like you said, whether he's able to find the bodybuilding dumbbells to make it even harder for Nicholas. Well, right now, it looks like a good option for him. He already has that energy. There is the Apricorn Maker deciding what to get off of that. Looks like Nest is going to be one of them. He might just choose to leave it at that just because he might not be able to play out a second card if he were to get it. Although he does have a couple of Great Balls left. No. Okay, yeah, he does, he does just Apricorn Maker for the Nest Ball, which gets him the Snubble. Yeah, uh, it's also because later on, if you uh, draw into Great Ball, it's just a card you could pitch. Yeah, that, that, that's true. It's one of these insta-play cards that you don't w want to... That, that's not bad to draw into. All right, so here we see him smooth over for Palpad. Uh, it's actually a pretty heads-up play, just because you are ahead in the prize race. And you do have access to probably like a field blower in your deck. So even if your opponent does play Botting Billy Dumbbells, you have some play against it. But this puts back both Diantha, which is still insane in the mirror match. Yeah, it's just because of the way this mirror match plays out, unless what Nicholas could do ideally is maybe Guzma KO the Makago or the Oranguru, because that way Diantha would not be live. At the same time, if he does that, it means that there's a grand ball just ready to attack straight away. So it's yeah, a bit of a catch-22. Yeah, if he draws, uh, Ultra Ball, then you don't even need the Macargo. Yeah. It's it's not looking great for Nicolas, no matter which way you look at it. And it's hard to say that about someone who has two Macargo and two Orangaroo in play. Yeah, it's just because, like you said at the beginning of the match, Jeremy, uh, Victor's gone first, he's taken the first KO, and the match has just like played out normally. There's been no turnaround turn when Nicolas has been able to, to prevent prevent Victor from taking a prize. So he has that Shrine of Punishment in his hand. Could just play it down to try to draw more cards with Instruct here. Yeah, so there is Instruct for two. Actually not even smooth over for here. And wow, that was a pretty good two cards. That was a pretty good two cards. Bramble and a Stretcher. So now he could use the other smooth over, or, or use a smooth over rather to find the Fairy Energy. And then it trapped into that. Uh, oh, no, but then if he does that, he wouldn't have enough cards to discard off the Ultra Ball. Oh, dear. It'll be interesting to see what he chooses to do here. He does have a Rescue Stretcher as well, which he looks like he might be considering playing. He does indeed. Is he going to get back something to the hand? Yes, he's going to get back a Snubble, and he's just going to put it straight down. Imagine the thought process going through these two players' minds at this point in time, just thinking... I, I wouldn't even be able to keep up. No, it's just such a such a brain-power-intensive uh, deck, in spite of the fact, you know, people, when you, when you say to someone, oh, this deck plays a little bit like your know, Solitaire, you think, oh, you know, it's just, you know, I'm going to do my, my combo and just do my damage, and it's just very easy to pilot. Not at all the case with um, Grand Ball. You just have to be really, really careful about what you pick every single turn. Yeah, so it actually is awkward that Nicolas drew the Rescue Stretcher because he really just needed cards to discard. 
and with that Ultra Ball. So now being forced to smooth over for Apricorn Maker. Oh. No, maybe not. What did he grab instead? I'm not sure. Maybe Rescue Stretcher? Not another one. He's, uh, he's getting strapped anyway, so we'll be right, able to see it now. These are big two cards. It was a Guzma. So, oh, wow. Okay. Guzma and a Grand Bull off the top from that Instruct. He has the Ultra Ball in hand, but no energy. He's probably going to grab it now off of this move over. But he's, has, he's used both of his Instructs. Yeah, that's a Guzma. He's gonna bring it, yeah, he's going to bring up the Macargo. Is there anything he can do? And actually, Nicolas misses the attack this turn. And this is heartbreaking right now. He was already behind in the prize trade, thanks to Victor going first. But now he misses an all-out attack. Uh, and this is big. This is can not, could not be bigger, because now, Victor, all he really needs is a Guzma of his own. He... Probably he gets the Macargo out of the way, brings up the Gramble, KOs it, and then he's two prizes ahead. And at that point, there's almost no way Nicholas can come back. Yeah, he does have only one smooth over available to him, but two instructs. I believe I saw a Guzma in the deck, Jeremy. Yeah, he hasn't really used any Guzma this game no. or been, been forced to discard any as well. So there's a blind instruct there. Field Blower, Apricorn Maker, and a Rangaroo. Those are two cards that you <laughs> don't really want to see. No, not right now. There's uh, no no discard outs in that hand, which makes things a little bit more awkward. Could we see Victor miss the the attack here as well? Potentially. I mean, uh, so it wouldn't be the end of the world for him because it would essentially just put them back to the pace they were before. But it would mean that if Nicholas were able to evolve the active snubble into a gramble and get a fairy energy, he could KO the Macargo which would mean that Victor would have no access to Smooth Over at all. So there is Smooth Over for Victor here. What's he going to pick? Also, drawing the Field Blower, it, it's really interesting because uh, the way you approach this mirror match, you really have to respect bodybuilding dumbbells. And he plays two, so... Not knowing what your opponent's exact list is, he, he saw the Zebstrika, so maybe that kind of gives a little bit of hint. Like, you have a little few more cards than I don't. Uh, but it is a card that is a popular inclusion, at least as a one-of in this list. Yeah, it's just something that you got to be very careful about. And um, obviously, he doesn't know that Nicholas doesn't play bodybuilding dumbbells. In effect, because it's only, it's only Victor that's playing it. So. Yeah. So, so he, he kind of wants to prioritize that field blower in his hand. He's like, well, if I'm going to miss the attack here, he attacks me with a bodybuilding dumbbells. I'm going to need this. But he kind of just has to to even play a card. And there we see the Apricorn Maker. He yeah. drew into a Lost Blender that he put on top. Uh, that's a card that uh, was in one of the some of the lists that came out before. And it's really good. Just remove two cards, draw a card. Yeah, it's just one of, another one of these, you know, hand thinning cards that anything that you get rid of with it goes to the lost zone. So that's then something you can't deal with. Smooth over. Yeah, be interesting to see what he actually puts to the top here. Maybe he just goes to the Guzma straight away. Yeah, actually, that's what, yeah, is what he's going to put to the top. Well, it looks like at least. Yeah, that way next turn you can just Guzma or it looks like Diantha as well. There's a probably a oh went with the third option. Probably a fairy energy. All right, all out. Nicholas now ties it up two to two prizes, and this is going to be a big couple of turns here. Bodybuilding dumbbells off the top for wow. Victor there. Wow. Granted, uh, with the two Macargo that Nicholas has, he does have access to the one field blower in his deck. Yeah. But if he chooses to field blower it this time, and then next time, he might not have the field blower. No, exactly. This is uh, actually pretty much ideal situation no matter which way you look at it uh it just he sort of just needs to be careful to make sure that he doesn't play this out in a way where he can't pin out his hand he's got access to the lost blender he's got the bodybuilding dumbbells he's got you know enough cards that he could play out to make it okay he just yeah just needs to tread carefully here he actually is just going to go for the lost lost blender first off gets rid of the oh yeah orange obviously and the great ball and drawing a fairy energy which was pretty good there yeah this this is this is pretty good. 
He goes for the bodybuilding dumbbells on the active, and then he can just instruct the two, discard whatever he gets, and take the KO. Yeah, uh, he's really looking to not draw anything of relevance here off of that instruct. Uh, what did he draw? Field blower, great ball. That's, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah, he's uh, more than happy to discard those. Rather, <laughs> of all things he could have discarded, he could definitely discard it a lot worse. So he's just going to look through now to see what he still has access to and just going to go for the all out. I think this turn playing it out the way it has done has pretty much sealed the deal for Victor for this game at least. Well, you that could be remember, premature. You got to remember, field blower is going to be big thing but yeah as long as he can get his hand down to zero next turn it, it's looking like it will take the game yeah because that's exactly the, that's the problem i mean Nic nicholas can easily like you mentioned get the field blower and take the knockout that's fine but then can he stop victor from taking another ko i honestly don't think he can he actually promoted the macargo because he is going to guzma this turn most likely do you, Guzma, take a knockout on a Ranguru, kind of stymie his draw a little bit? Potentially, yeah. It might, it might mean that he has you know, less outs to play cards to draw into enough stuff to fit out his hand. And that Yeah, there it is. Guzma on the Ranguru has the Shrine of Punishment and then another smooth over for next turn if he chooses to. Yeah, almost forgot about it. <laughs> but he does go for it. Seeing what's left, but puts the field uh, blow down. One awkward thing, there is no other snubble, but if Victor takes the knockout, it's game over yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, he, he knows he doesn't need to get another snubble out. So there it is. KO. Can Victor play his hand out? This is all it comes down to. Draws. Oh, no. I think he drew into a Grand Bull. There's a Slugma that he got from the prizes as well with only one Oranguru now. This Instruct needs to hit an Ultra Ball or something to get his hand down. Shrine of Punishment, don't. Fairy Energy. He will not be able to get his hand down. And I think Nicholas just stole this game. Unbelievable. How, my God, this. <laughs> this, there's the field blower on the top. Apricorn Maker, all out, take the knockout. Nicholas Glass, up 1-0. I am speechless, Jeremy. That was, oh my goodness. Uh, basically capitalizing on the one turn that he did not have the knockout, no. choosing to instead Guzma the Macargo into the active spot, and then in turn, Victor missed his own Guzma, wasn't able to get his hand down either, opted to just pass, and then his Makara got knocked out, and because of that, wasn't able to get his hand down to zero. Yeah, one of those things that you just you know, assume that, you know, of course will have an, you know, enough outs to be able to, you know, discard the rest of his hand, but no, drawing that Gramble and not having access to Makargo, like you said, to be able to guarantee the out to, you know, fin out the hand, and then not drawing it off the instruct because there was less draw. That's, Nicholas could not have played that more perfectly if he tried. That is absolutely astonishing. And... I mean, there's a reason this guy got top eight at Worlds. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> wow. That's, I mean, I mean, and now as well. I mean, considering how much time has expired from the clock. There's yeah, that was a pretty long game. You wouldn't really think of it because these are just such fast decks, but you're doing so many actions and thinking. And uh, only to taking one prize each and time And only as taking well. one prize. So it and actually tends to be a long game. Yeah, it, it really does, and uh, both of these players are going to need to, as much as they really can't afford to, because they need to get their decisions right when they're doing this sequencing, they need to be able to play a bit faster to actually, or rather, Victor does, if he wants to see uh, see enough get game time to go to a game free and take this match back. Wow. I, would, did, I did not see that coming at all. Uh, really just playing to his outs and saying, I, I hope you don't have it. Yeah, and... Lo and behold, he didn't, and that means that Nicholas has now taken game one. He's got to be smiling about that. He knows how close he was potentially to losing. Yeah, and I think one of the things that really hindered Victor's setup a little bit was not having bodybuilding dumbbells earlier on in the game. Yeah, definitely, because that is like the one tool that he can use to really, you know, take the edge in the mirror. And he, you know, by the time he found it, it was too late because Nicholas had access to the field blower and was able to just take the win. Yeah, and that's really important too, is that Nicholas only plays one field blower. So, but I mean, if you have the two Bukago out, it doesn't matter, right? You can always just find it exactly when you need it. All right, prizing two fairy energy and a rescue stretcher for okay. Nicholas there. Yeah. Two yeah. Snubble and a Slugma. Two Slugma in the prizes. <laughs> Having what? only Ditto Prism Star.
Oh my goodness, that is not what you want to see in the win and in of the final Swiss round at the International Championships. Especially, you lost when you had the advantage going first. Yeah. Now you have going first again, really needing to pull out a win within 18 minutes. And you can see he's already sped up massively already. He's just, you know, sucking through his deck, trying to make sure he gets everything. He's just going straight for the Ditto Prism. Yeah, there it is. Two Slugma Prize, in, in case it wasn't clear enough. And two, two Snubble, too. This is really going to put a big burden on his back for this game. <sighs> that is... It gets absolute heartbreak for Victor at this point once he sort of sees all of that. He's really going to need to get a fast start and get these knockouts going without the help of Macargo yeah. to try to get in those basic Pokemon. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's got a second Orin Guru. He can start doing some instructs. I actually just attached the ferry to the Ditto. Uh, does instructs for free and finds a Titan Liza as well as a Rescue Stretcher and an Apricorn, Apricorn Maker. Maker. Yeah, so he's just going to go for that straight away, of course. Probably just grab a couple of Nest Balls, get two Snubbles. Yeah, but with uh, his hand the way it is now, it is pretty hard to get it down, especially if he, yeah, he opts for two Nest Ball here. Oh, yeah, he has to, right? He just needs to get more basics down. Oh, man. One. He, he, you can oh, look through the deck as much as you want. There's, yeah. no, there's no Slugmas there. <laughs> and the other Snubble was right on top. This is heartbreaking. This is I'm, I'm trying to uh, see if I can see his facial reaction, but... Yeah. No, I think yeah, you, you can just tell from the way the way he's you know flicking through, just desperately trying to see maybe I just yeah, and, missed it. And this is where you have to know something's up if you're Nicholas. Yeah, yeah, you look through and you think, where the slug was, what's going on here? Mate, this is this is is this real life? You know, we, we can actually see a play of Guzma the Ditto Prism attach a Fairy Energy to Snubble, discard two items from his hand to deal 40 damage. Wow, that would that would be incredible. That would mean no Macargo for essentially the entire game until Victor starts taking prizes. Yeah, and he got the bodybuilding dumbbells, seeing it earlier this time, but that's really not, he would much rather just have access to a Slugma. Yeah, it's looking like Nicholas Hand does not have that spicy play. No. But he will be able to just get set up here, and he's already ahead having Slugma. I mean, if, you, if your setup is that far ahead regardless because your opponent has two Slugma prize, I don't think you're going to be too concerned either way. Yeah, and uh, seeing how this game may shape up, it might look like a long one, and that's exactly what Nicholas wants. Because, yeah, the longer it goes on, the, m the more likely he is to just be able to win on the virtue of having won the first game of the match. And there is the one draw supporter in the entire deck for both of these players, Tate and Liza, again, shuffle draw five, uh, <laughs> two times in two games. Yeah, I mean, Nic Nicholas just needs to see a lot more basics right now. He just he needs energy, uh, stuff to evolve, maybe some more ball search cards. So absolutely, the probably the best time to play the Tate and Liza, given that even if he doesn't thin out his entire hand, he wouldn't be able to attack anyway. All right, hits another Snubble. That is exactly what you need. Also has a great ball here. Could be fetch, fetch something good. Oh, look, there's a There's, there's a the cargo. It's not bad. Also another Snubble, but Macargo is what you want. Yeah, you got two Snubbles down already. You don't need a third one. It's uh, definitely the Macargo, the, what you want to go for here. And go even the having the Diantha for next turn or the Guzma, depending on what Victor does with his turn as well. Yeah, so draw for turn for Victor. He does find himself an Apricorn Maker. That's a pretty good find. He... That's a pretty good find, but this Orangru is stuck active right now. He was kind of hoping to draw into something like a Grand Bull to even just take a quick knockout here to try to fish out one of those Snubble or Slugma in the prizes. Indeed, and interestingly enough, Bodybuilding Dumbbells goes onto the Ditto. Yeah, uh, he kind of just hoping he gets some Slugma from the prizes and maybe hoping a Grand Bull can kind of survive a couple turns. Yeah, just carry him through a bit. He just plays the opposite play the rescue stretcher. Oh, he discarded a Grand Bull turn one. Yes, he did. But so he he's evolved the Ditto into the Grand Bull. He, yeah. So he has no access to Macargo now. No access to Macargo and actually has two supporters in his hand. Three supporters in his hand now. But he did draw Guzma though. And he has access to two more instructs. He has three Orange Gurus out on the field. So yeah, this is what he's going to do right now. He's going to play the Guzma. He's going to bring up the Slugma. All right, spin the wheel again. Yeah. Rescue Stretcher, that does not help. He can't play any of it, right? Is there a Pokemon in his discard? 
Okay, there is. There is. A, it's Another Grand Ball. Okay, That's shuffle. You. Okay, yeah. So Put he needs top. to see Fiery Flint or Ultra Ball or Lost Blender off of this. What does he see? Field a Field That's not going to do it. Oh. All out for 30 damage. That is not what you want to announce. <laughs> Again, the Victor just not able to catch a break. And wow. Nicolas drawing Ultra Ball from the top of his deck, meaning he has the Guzma in his hand. He has an Ultra Ball. He has the Fairy Energy and the Macargo. He has everything he needs to take a knockout on everything but the Grand Bull inactive. Yeah. There's the Fairy Energy going onto the bench snubble. With the Guzma in hand, he can just you know play around the bodybuilding dumbbells quite easily, opting to you know take out one of the Oran Gurus, it looks like. I mean, <laughs> even if Vixel doesn't have uh, the Macargo out, which obviously he would like to, being able to do free instructor turn is still pretty good. So cutting that down a little bit is probably going to be a good idea. Yeah, and I actually love this play of not using Smooth Over. Just set up your turn for next turn, probably with a Diantha on top of your deck. And that's he's going for the Smooth Over now. He could also choose maybe the field blower since that yes. bodybuilding dumbbells is there. That, and that is exactly what he has gone for. And this is where I was talking about earlier where these decks have no disruption outside of Guzma no, for your no. opponent. So he's going to get that field blower next turn. Yeah, yeah, he is. That is, He can pretty much sit, sit comfortably knowing that that's going to stay there. And now for the all out for 160, the Oranguru goes down, one prize card for Nicholas. And now not only is he is Victor in this really bad spot with the stuff in his prizes? But in spite of having gone first, he's not taking the first prize. Nicolas going second is taking the first prize. Yeah, uh, it's been a pretty insane turn of events for Nicolas. These two games so far, uh, really just hitting all the right draws. There goes Apricorn Maker finding Nest Ball and Ultra Ball. Nest Ball gets played. Yeah, Victor actually drew Lost Blender for the turn. A pretty good card. Uh, kind of a catch-all to just remove those supporters in your hand. Also has Ultra Ball. He might be able to, just, probably just trying to work out the best way to play out his hand to make sure that he can pin it out to zero. If he plays the Lost Blender, he does. He would end up drawing a card. That might end up being a supporter that you can't play, so perhaps not wanting to risk the Lost Blender necessarily. Or, uh, or, uh, or maybe well, having the Ultra Ball as a backup kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, oh Pal Pad. Uh. I guess he can he can play it and instruct and then ultra ball away the two card he, cards he instructs for. Yeah, yeah. So that that, that actually works out fine. And definitely, um, uh, Victor recognizing that uh, lost lost blundering away the tantalizer and the fuel blower is not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination. All right, we have his last instruct here, and then he'll be able to ultra ball get probably another grand ball, or maybe just nothing. Mm. Oh no. He drew Guzma Diantha oh, off no. of the Instruct. Not Rhapsody. what you want to discard, especially when you just <laughs> pal padded back some supporters. Yeah, I was thinking exactly that. It's uh, not ideal in the slightest. Yeah, and he actually benched the Snubble this turn, so not being able to get a Gramble to evolve it. No, because otherwise he'll be stuck in his hand and he wouldn't be able to get the KO. And, uh, and obviously Victor can take the KO here. It takes the, his first prize of the game. And uh, he's actually able to get one of those slugmas out, at least. So that is, uh, he's going to be a bench set. <laughs> Party time in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, but instead, uh, Field Blower gets played, discarding the bodybuilding dumbbells. Gets, uh, so he gets Snubble. Is he Getting the Diantha, pretty much guaranteeing the attack this turn. And then Instruct also drawing two random cards as well. Uh, it would be beneficial if he gets stuff he can burn or even just an energy to attach that way he can choose different cards to get with diantha yeah so oh, it, was, it was a choice band that got attached to the snubble that's uh, yeah. obviously just to get, get it out of the hand because obviously not going to be doing much extra damage wise in this matchup fiery flint and shrine of punishment a little awkward here a little awkward but at the same time he can just like, for back for you know something he needs and something that he doesn't care so much about and then just fiery flint them both away to get the attack off well, he doesn't have access to Instruct or oh. Granbull or an Energy, so he will just pass the turn here. Whoa. And so there we have Granbull Evolve, all out knockout. Victor is back, and it has both of his Slugma now. 
these these constant turnarounds. I mean, and now Victor's again he has that he's that favored in the price trade because he's down to four, whereas Nicholas is still on five. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I, my heart can take much more of this, Jeremy. <laughs> like, this is All right, there oh. is the Diantha again. He expected. He knew he was going to get knocked out. Uh, also has the option to fiery flint both of these away or mysterious treasure, and then instruct into two cards. He fiery flints away again. But you just run the risk of drawing cards that you might need, like Snubble or even just more energy. Yeah, something you could have done instead is Mysterious Treasure or the Fiery Flint just play the Shrine of Punishment and play the rest of the hand out that way and then still, you know, guarantee the knockout whilst not, you know, putting yourself in a position where he might have to discard something he doesn't want to. Yeah, because it looks like uh, no other Snubble on the bench for Niklas here. No, he's going to go for a smooth over now. He's actually, oh, he's just going to put a Blitz onto the top of his deck, interestingly enough. Just, yeah, getting something that he doesn't really want to bench. Something he's happy to, to, to discard off a of Fiery Flint. So there it is. Could this be a turning point for Victor here? He actually drew a Snubble oh, as well. Oh, my goodness. That is, again, like, oh, there's this turnaround in luck. You know, he just, Nicholas, seeing the things he really doesn't want to discard. And you can get the all that KO here, but and I don't, I don't know if Nicholas can last seven minutes. No, I don't know either. And uh, if, if like, <laughs> look how fast there Victor we go. Just <laughs> Victor down to three prizes now, overcoming these terrible odds. I'm so, I'm so impressed with the quality of play for both of these players. Again, turning really unfavorable situations back in, turning the wins back, you know, in their side and be able to. You know, make, make pull a comeback win out of seemingly nowhere. Oh man, what a match this has been. Uh, who would have thought that a Gramble Mirror can be this exciting? I mean, I don't think we could have asked for much of a better match for the final round of Swiss. Is that it, an energy on the Oranguru? It is an energy on the Oranguru. There is a Guzma on the Slugma. But that's another missed turn of attacks. <laughs> kind of playing the, the switcheroo here. Wait, how did he retreat again? No, no, he's deciding the Guzma. Oh, oh, okay. So I think maybe, maybe switch it to the other Oranguru instead. And then Palpad probably putting back Guzma, Diantha. No, no, but hold on, he still needs, because... Oh, no, the Oranguru is on the bench. And yeah. Then, okay, th yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah, because the Oranguru uh, was active, he guzma <laughs> Thought about bringing up the Macargo, but instead brought up the Rangaroo with the energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, so there's another instruct. Oh, gets the Blitzel. That could be something pretty good to help him come back. But again, no, no Snubble in play. Attaching the Fairy Anti, doing the instruct. Uh, just Magma does, Ring. Wow. So 10 that, damage. And he can't retreat. And you can't retreat. Oh, man. I mean, Nicholas's game plan basically at this point is just hope that Victor can't take free prizes very quickly because, of course, he, if he can run the clock out and make yeah, it... Yeah, well, his Guzma did exactly what he wanted it yeah. to do. Uh, I want to have you not use All Out next turn, and that's exactly what he did. Just the problem being that Nicholas can't use All Out himself. Look, there's still no snubbles on his side of the field. Oh, man. Has that Rescue Stretcher in hand could opt for something like Zeep Striker or even just getting Snubble. Well, but he's just played an Apricorn Maker here, so now yeah, he can get like a couple of Nest Balls, or like a Nest Ball and an Ultra Ball, and played a Nest Ball, going to go for another Slugma, actually just not opting to bench Snubble at all, interestingly enough. And he's going to go for a smooth over, going to put a Guzma on the top of the deck. Yeah, this is the strategy he's going for right now. I think he realizes that if he tries to do a constant trade of, you know, prize against prize, he's going to lose. So instead, he's just going all in on this to run the clock strategy and just try to prevent Victor from taking three more knockouts. Yeah, and it's working. Not having any Slugma early game and now not having any Macargo late game. It's really hindering the setup for Victor here. And he's he's committing a lot of energy around the field as well because he's look he's got one no, two energy onto that bench gramble now these decks don't play a high account of basic energy at all he's really banking on finding a Guzma of his own to switch the Slugma out the active. Yeah, and then of course we might just see him try to run Victor out of Guzma and then Magma Ring uh, until he just can't retreat. Yeah. And then try to stall out the game that way. There's another great ball. Under four minutes left to go here. Round 14, winner of this game 
will go on to top eight. Well, if they tie, then yeah, that's it's, it's going to be a little awkward. Another magma ring. There's a Pokemon catcher. That could be interesting. It's just another way to bring up someone that will have to be Guzmud out of the active. Yeah, and uh, with the amount of energy that Victor's committed, like even pay, attaching two and then paying manually to retreat is really not oh, he, viable. Oh, he put it in his hand, but oh. it was the same card. Yes. Uh, this is the problem when you get into these sort of fast play situations, you've got to be just so careful. Oh, no. Oh, is there going to be some kind of disagreement here? is technically drawing an extra card, but you do know about it. But the thing is, Victor does not know about it. No, exactly. And uh, he couldn't have done the instruct yet either because the hand is too big. Yeah. So there's no, you know, that shortcut doesn't really work out the same way. You can't just say, oh, it wouldn't have mattered. It's, it actually makes a potentially a, a big difference. So this could be huge because uh, if there is any ruling, it looks like there is no ruling. We'll get a confirmation, though. Yeah. But if it is, a double prize penalty could be detrimental, meaning just a Guzma and a knockout could take the game for Victor. Yeah, we're just going to wait on confirmation of that to see if any penalty was given. I think given that the card went back on top of the deck and didn't get shuffled in, that would kind of tell me that it was just seen as, you know, that it was agreed upon and that it, it's yeah. fine. But uh, we will just get confirmation of that either way. And it is crazy to think how, on a dime, Nicholas switched his strategy, seeing, yeah, I'm not going to be able to keep up with this all-out race. Uh, so I'm going to put in my two Guzma instead of Dianthas, and then with the Guzmas and the Pokemon Catcher, hopefully just deny you being able to win this game. Yeah, and uh, I think that's absolutely the correct strategy to go for, realizing that, you know, no matter, even with, you know, field blows, guarding the bodybuilding dumbbells, there's no way he could... You know, prevent Victor from taking enough prizes to win just by taking extra prizes in the prize trade. And there is a smooth over and the pass. But now the Ultra Ball that Victor smoothed over on top last turn gets the other Macargo. Now he will have access to essentially his entire deck. Just going to go for the Lost Blender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you don't need to show it. Yeah. <laughs> smooth over. Yeah, I'm going to get this Lost Blender. Yeah, just uh, get to the point in the game where you just kind of forget because it has to you know, and which is great because now he can smooth over for the Guzma or the Switch even, yeah. And then draw it with the Lost Blender. Yeah, perfect play right here. Wow, that is so, so good. There it is, Lost Blender, Lost, lost Zoning, those two drawing one, which is uh, indeed the Switch. And then all out knockout. Victor goes down to two prizes. Under a minute left here. Can Nicholas stay off this onslaught? He's going to be calculating just what resources Victor has been through just to make sure he knows the correct decision to make. He draws for the turn, he finds another Macargo. Not much use to him. He has another Guzma he can use to stroll with though. Oh no, the, the Sugma was uh, not involved yet, so the, now he has actually access to two smooth overs. It's, it's really good. Tails on Pokemon Catcher, but Guzma. having the Guzma. It's gotta be done. Guzma bringing up his own Macargo and bringing up Victor's Macargo. Oh, uh, no, actually going for Onguru instead. Again with the fake out here. Announces pass. And now can Victor just take two prizes? That's all he needs oh, to do. Oh, no. Abricorn Maker off the top of the deck, meaning Guzma is not really an out here. He'll have to do a little bit of thinking with Smooth Over with all that, but our time clock has run out. We'll get confirmation if time was called here. If so... Victor is turn zero. I think by virtue of the fact that Victor has oh. slowed down a lot, I don't. I think that would kind of indicate that time has been called. It also could depend when time was actually called, if it was on Nicholas's turn or not, because Nicholas could have been turn zero, oh. meaning Victor has just two turns left to try to win this game. I mean, it would actually be the case either way, because if uh, if the time was called on Victor's turn, you had, yeah, this turn, so it would. Um, but it could actually. In a sense, Nicholas has actually hurt himself by doing that because that means he has one less turn. Well, he was never going to win this game. No, I guess not. Prizes. It is, it is just comes down to this, folks. Can Victor get runner, runner, prize, prize to tie the series? Another out he could do is actually get the Guzma and then get the Fairy Energy and take a knockout with Granbull that way. Uh, the often not used second attack from Granbull 
I believe it looks like three fairy energy for a hundred something damage. No, no. Victor concedes. And Nicolas will make wow. his top eight. More than likely of the Latin American International Championships. Just could not get there in enough time. No. Needing to go runner runner on prizes. Not able to do it. And uh, yeah, wow. That's nail biter right to the end. But uh, Nicolas doing absolutely everything he had to.